Okay, welcome back to part two of the Definitive Technology Supercube 3 repair. The customer did approve the estimate. I did order some parts, but first, remember the pot that I couldn't find any data on whatsoever? Nothing listed on the back of it or underneath anything? It is an audio taper 50K pot, an A503, as well as the main level control pot is an audio 5K. I did go ahead and order a replacement pot for this one. This one is a linear taper 20K dual pot. So now for the low pass crossover pot, I chose this one. I believe it to be almost an exact match of the original with the exception of the shaft length right here is very slightly shorter, but I made sure the knob would go onto it. So I think that's gonna be fine. There is the part number for it. I purchased this from Mauser Electronics here in the USA. Okay, so for the main level control, I chose this pot, which is a 5K audio taper potentiometer. Physically, it is a lot smaller than the original one was. There's a size comparison between the original and the replacement. I did have to go ahead and trim the shaft because the original shaft was much longer. I wanted to try to give it the same footprint. It is an audio 5K taper pot. So what I'm gonna have to do, this one mounted down to the board in that orientation. I'm gonna to have to mount this one upside down like this. And then I'm gonna to have to run some jumper leads down around to the terminals on the board. But I think it's gonna work out just fine. Once again, there's the part number purchased from Mauser in the United States. And this is the last one. This one is the phase adjustment and I chose a 50K audio pod, an A503. But once again, it's a very small form factor. This one, I did not have to cut the shaft off. It was already a short shaft. So here is the original and the replacement. You can see the size difference, but I think it's gonna mount up just fine. Now this one is a dual potentiometer. The original one was single, three leads only. The replacement has six. So I'm just not gonna use three of those six leads and we're gonna be just fine on that. So let's go ahead and get them installed and see what's gonna happen. So this is how they're gonna to mount to the front, the 5K level pot here, the 20K pot here, and the 50K pot here. So because these do have a little tab on the front of them, might be kind of hard to see there, but there it is on the upper portion closest to the terminals. I did go ahead and drill a little relief hole. Actually, I, I misdrilled it upside down the first time, but that way it keeps it from spinning if the nut should come loose. Same thing over here, drill a little cut out for that notch. Uh, this one did have a tab. I just went ahead and broke it off because it's going to be mounted to the board and then secured. So let's go ahead and get these things mounted up. Put this thing back on the road and make the customer happy. Okay, so I have the replacement pots wired. The terminals are heat shrunk, ready to go. And I did go ahead and twist the leads to minimize interference. And on the audio one, I reverse twisted the leads. So one's clockwise and one is counterclockwise to minimize interference. So let's go ahead and get all three pots mounted up to the board, get this thing reassembled and give it a test. Okay, now that it's all back together, let's do some ohm checks on these pots. Now remember these two leads, I believe were shorted together, 0 0.0102. Now I do have it at minimum resistance right now, so I should see close to zero ohms. I'd be happy if it was like five or less. 1.4, perfectly fine. Now let's open it up all the way. Since this is a 50K pot, I should see close to 50K here. And I see 45.79K, absolutely perfect. Now onto this one. Remember this, these two are shorted together on both sets of pots. So it's at a minimum right now. I should see about 20K and I see 18.41 and 18.97. So let's turn it up all the way. I should see close to zero here, 0.9 ohms, great and one ohm, perfect. Now last, the volume pot. Remember this thing was open end to end. It's a 5K pot. I should see close to 5K and I see 4.7 and charging. Must be a cap right there. And on this one, I see 4.97 and charging. So remember, it's at the minimum. These two should be shorted. 1.1, perfectly fine. 
1.2, perfectly fine. And we should see once again close to 5K here and close to 5K there, we do. Let's turn it up all the way now. Volume maximum. These two should be shorted now. Yes, yes, and I should see close to 5K here. Yes, perfect. Let's get it back together now, make sure it works. Okay, well there it is, up and playing. I have my MP3 player connected to it with a little bit of audio going into it. So let's turn the volume up. Now I do have it going into the dummy load so it won't be too terribly loud. But this thing must have a punch. It might be kind of hard to see but it's actually dimming the lights. It's drawing so much current on the bass notes. But anyhow, there it is, up and running. Everything's working great. The variable low pass, 40 hertz to 150 hertz, working great. I don't know if the phase is working correctly because I don't have anything to monitor the phase other than an oscilloscope. But anyhow, there it is, the power field, Supercube 3 by Definitive Technology, up and running once again. Go ahead, leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill out of the recycle bin and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Stay tuned for bonus scenes. Everyone have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Okay, a little bonus footage. I've got the 50K pot here out of the circuit. And I read absolutely nothing on it. Not even in the mega ohm range. Let's pop this thing open. There it is, there are the internals of the pot. So, one of the commenters said, I can actually measure the carbon pad. Well, I don't think that's gonna happen. I tried that and it didn't work, but let's give it another try just in case. I'm moving it around on the carbon pad. I get absolutely nothing. I get nothing to the wiper. I think the carbon is just used up in this thing. I don't know if it was under humidity, some kind of chemical. I, I do read something 1.7K, but that's just a small amount that I'm reading. I don't get anything. So I'm just reading from the wiper, basically. I'll read over to here. I read 8.7K. So I'm thinking the part that actually failed was the lead in to the actual carbon. The carbon seems to be okay. 4K. Forty seven K. Yeah, the carbon actually is okay. It's the lead in, the part that connects the terminal to the actual carbon, because 
I should get a reading. From here to the wiper and I don't. And once again, down in here, it has that little lead in area. And yes, I did try moving this up and down. I get nothing whatsoever. So on the zoomed in view, you can see where I had my meter. And I had nothing but see where those three lines are right in the center right there. That's the lead in trace. And it goes way up in there to the carbon pad. Actually, this one shouldn't have carbon at all. It should be just nothing but conductive. So I don't know if some moisture got in here or what happened. But down in there is the carbon pad. It's actually good, but see where it starts to get right in here a little bit lighter in color? Well, that should be basically zero ohm conductive lead in material. Same thing on this side. But let's go ahead and see if we can get the audio level control apart and see what it looks like inside. Okay, so this is the volume control 5K pot. This is the back side. I left the front side in there because I just don't want to tear that thing completely apart to get to it. So from this terminal to right about here is the lead in material, which is what I call it. it. May actually have another appropriate name, but this should be zero ohms from here to here. And then this is the carbon right here. And where it starts to get shiny again, that's the lead in material back to this terminal. This terminal should be nothing but lead in material. It should be basically just zero ohm resistance all the way around here. So let's get the ohmmeter out. We'll do a couple checks and see what this thing looks like. Okay, so I am on the mega ohm scale, 40 million ohms. So just if I touch the leads to my fingers, look at that, four megs. So let's measure from here to here. This should be a 5K pot. I get 24 million ohms. So let's just check the lead in material and see what we get on this side. 15 million. 7 million. So let's go ahead and check the carbon path. So I'm just gonna pick a spot here and just out of the lead in and I should get about 5K. And I do, 4.9K. The carbon path is perfectly fine. Should be like one ohm or less. I mean, that's close. Still, I get 0 0.97 meg, 970K, 960K. 970K, 980K. 990, as I get closer, it should start going down. I'm using my probe as the wiper. Look at that, 1.007. It should start coming down as I get closer around this side, but it's not. Look at that. Wow. This thing is toast. Yeah, from here I should get zero ohms. 3.5 meg. But like I said, the wiper portion of it from here to here is absolutely perfect. There it is, 5K. That's the value of the pot. So if I bring this around, it should start going down. Pretty soon I'm gonna touch. Yep, it touched. Look at that, I can get down to 41 ohms. That's the closest I can get at 40 ohms. But anyhow, there it is, a look inside the pots. 
So the carbon resistance is actually okay. It's the supposedly zero ohm lead in material that is the problem. Thanks for watching the bonus footage. I really appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.